Welcome to the Art of Catholic Podcast. I'm Matthew Leonard. I'm glad to have you with us today. I have a very interesting show for you guys today, and it's interesting because it's going to be focused on one of the greatest Catholic personalities and evangelists of the last century, at least, and that is the Venerable Archbishop Fulton Sheen. Uh, as always, I'd like to thank uh, my patrons for making this show possible. Uh, if you'd like to help me spread the faith and the truth, beauty, and goodness of Catholicism, please uh, go to patreon.com slash Matthew Leonard. And uh, also, the, the podcast is sponsored by the Science of Sainthood, uh, which is the online platform where I offer professional video courses that are focused on authentic Catholic spirituality. In fact, right now, you can get 24 of those videos from the Science of Sainthood for a couple of weeks absolutely free. And you can do that by going to scienceofsainthood.com. Or if you, you're in the United States, you can text the word SAINT to 668 six six um but i don't know where else you're going to find another offer like that 24 dynamic professional lessons on the spiritual life for free so go check it out now my guest today is a first timer on uh, the art of catholic but he is someone w that i've been meaning to have on actually for quite a while his name is al smith and in addition to being a writer an editor a radio host uh, he's also the executive director of the archbishop fulton sheen society Mission Society of Canada. I got to get that right. And he's also a board member of the Archbishop Fulton Sheen Foundation uh, in Peoria, Illinois. Uh, and it would be no stretch to say that amongst many other things, Al Smith is a kind of a all things Sheen uh, kind of a guy. In fact, uh, I was thinking about Al, the first time that I met you was at a conference in Canada where we were both speaking and I went up to your table and you had all these Sheen books all over the the uh, the table. And I think I traded a couple of my books for one of the Sheen books. So I think I got the better end of that deal. Uh, but I'm, I'm very grateful to have you on The Art of Catholic. So welcome to the show. Matthew, thank you for having me. And uh, again, you did get the better end of the deal there on that trade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is no doubt about it. Um, I, I'm going to ask you kind of what turned you on to Sheen in just a second, but I, I think that probably the, the first question that's in a lot of people's minds right off the top is where does the canonization process uh, for the archbishop stand at this point? All right. Yeah, I've been, uh, of course, uh, working with the cause since 2013, and anyone who has followed the cause knows that it's been a little bit of a roller coaster ride, uh, a start, a stop, a start, a stop. And, uh, you know, we're on this pause. Uh, people are asking all the time, uh, you know, I heard the word postponed. And this is what I like to say. It's been postponed. It's been delayed. Um, and that we're encouraged that we feel that the Vatican will give us a new date uh, in the near future. And uh, we are in constant conversation with the Vatican uh, because, again, things are clearing up, I like to say. And uh, again, one thing I remind people is you can never take away the miracle. Uh, when the miracle happened of this little boy that was uh, stillborn and dead for 61 minutes and came back to life, uh, that was, of course, authenticated by uh, testimonies. And again, when the uh, group from the cause of the saints, the medical doctors that looked over the evidence and uh, you know, claimed it to be a miracle. And when the Holy Father uh, proved that miracle, you can never take that away. You know, so uh, we can, of course, choose dates and uh, worry about the future a little bit. But at the end of the day, Fulton Sheen's writings are spot on. Uh, they've been scrutinized. I think we're enjoying them still today uh, all over the world. And of course, the miracle uh, speaks a testimony to uh, the powerful intercession of the Venerable Sheen and the power of God's healing mercy. So uh, we're in good stay. So we're just waiting for an alternative date. And I'm sure it will happen with our lifetime. You know, people always say, will I see it within my lifetime? And I try to say, yes, you will. Um, again, patience is a virtue. It really is. Yeah, the church never moves quickly. We all know that. Right. Uh, and you know what? I'm, I'm glad it takes this time. Uh, but I, I look forward to the day when this is all finalized and we can celebrate the canonization of the Venerable Sheen. But what, you know, what is it um, that kind of introduced you to Sheen and got you excited about Sheen to begin with? Because, you know, coming into the church, my experience anyway, is that I was dealing with the early church fathers and I was reading all these kinds of guys. It, it took me a little while to actually come across 
Fulton Sheen, as kind of crazy as that sounds, because he was so wildly popular earlier, I just I didn't encounter him for a long time. So what? How did it work for you? Yeah, I have a similar story. I didn't read my first Fulton Sheen book till nineteen. I want to say uh, two thousand. I was 48 years old, and so um, (laughs) I don't want to date myself here, right? But uh, let's just say it was it was 2009. Okay, now it's coming here, Um, and uh, we were dropping our our uh, one of our daughters off to a small Catholic university uh, called Our Lady Seat of Wisdom College, and uh, I was settling my daughter into her dorm, and I was kind of just making sure that she was in good protective custody, like any good father, (laughs) sending his daughter away for the first time. And um, my good wife was in the library of the school, uh, looking through the books and talking to some of the staff. And there was a box of free books. And so, of course, uh, my wife saw the free books box and said, ooh, you know. And so she picked up uh, a book by Fulton Sheen called Peace of Soul. And uh, again, a, a tattered uh, paperback edition. Uh, the librarian was just trying to remove some of the older books and making room for some of the newer editions. And she started to read that book to me on the drive home. I was interested to hear, yeah, I'd heard about Fulton Sheen, but um, she, again, spent the time and read for me for about three hours. And the very first line of that book is simply this, unless souls are saved, nothing is saved. And when I heard that line, I thought, who speaks this language anymore? This language is saving souls. And he got my attention. Fulton Sheen got my attention. Uh, My background, uh, I like to say I had a bit of a charismatic influence. Um, uh, My mother and father were involved with the renewal for many years. And so uh, that language of saving souls was part of my childhood, part of my youth. And uh, it was refreshing to hear that again. And uh, again, I went home and I said to my wife, can I read that book? And she says, no, 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 you need to get your own Bishop Sheen book uh, because I'm going to be using this for a while. (laughs) And I went onto the Internet and I looked at Bishop Sheen and I said, oh, 66 books. (laughs) Wow. Uh, He wrote a lot of books. And there was 20 years of radio transcripts and, of course, television addresses. Uh, But I uh, somehow honed in on this one title called Victory Over Vice, uh, a Sheen classic from 1939. And it was his way of taking the seven last words and using them as the remedy for the seven deadly sins. And it was just just a masterpiece, because for the first time in my life, I kind of had a priest, I want to say, shoulder up to me, counsel me, and give me some good advice on what my sin cost our Lord, Um, and to realize that these deadly sins, uh, again, caused Jesus to die on the cross, and that I had to own them finally. Um, I think uh, sometimes we tend to just go to confession, uh, dot the I's, cross the T's, move on, and we continue to fall into the same habits of sin. But Fulton Sheen, using these seven last words that our Lord spoke from the cross, uh, understand, help me to understand Um, you know, how to overcome anger, how to overcome the sin of envy, the sin of lust, the sin of greed, and of course, (laughs) so many. But I thought I only had one sin, or maybe two, but I realized I suffered from all seven to some degree, but it was good therapy. And so once I read that book and got my head around uh, the just the cost of sin, um, I was looking for the next book, and the next book, and the next book. And within the first a year, I think I had read 24 of Sheen's books because they were all uh, bite-sized pieces. They were all easy to read, yet they were good. It was good counsel. He is a great counselor and a great spiritual guide, and that's what I needed. It was kind of, um, even though I was plugged into the church when I was younger, you kind of drift away a little bit. Yes, you're still going to Sunday Mass. Yes, you're still uh, attached, but have you done any devotionals? Have you worked on anything? And Fulton Sheen provided for me what I like to call three seven-step programs that uh, have really helped me a great deal over the years uh, and improved my spiritual life. You know, I'm kind of mentally slapping myself because there are, I know that there are new converts and potential converts uh, to Catholicism that kind of frequent this podcast. And 
we didn't even give any background on Sheen himself. So if you could just do a thumbnail sketch of who the Archbishop was, that I think that would be helpful to the audience. Right. Okay. Um, again, Google is amazing. Wikipedia, <laughs> all of these things. You just, right. uh, you know, Google Fulton Sheen and it'll come up. I mean, uh, born in 1895, uh, of course, uh, lived through two world wars, um, always um, had a desire to be a priest, even from a young age. Uh, grew up on a farm. The father and mother moved the family into the city so they could get a good Catholic education. And of course, Fulton Sheen was a brilliant student, uh, even from a young age. And uh, of course, entered the priesthood, um, studied hard, studied well, and uh, of course, uh, went off to Levain University to uh, do some uh, postgraduate work to get his uh, doctoral um, you know, work done. Of course, he aspired to be a teacher, and he, that he did. He taught at the Catholic University of America for over 20 years. And um, again, just was a priest that uh, had a heart for the people. And uh, the Lord uh, put him into a, a spotlight that I think uh, changed the lives of so many people because he had a great uh, skill, a great orator, and uh, made an appearance on the Catholic Hour uh, as a guest, um, you know, as a guest host. And there was such a good response to him that uh, he spent the next 22 years on the Catholic Hour uh, just weekly addressing the nation, uh, probably four to five million listeners every week, uh, just giving a sound catechesis. And then he transitioned to television. And many people are familiar with his Life is Worth Living broadcast and uh, even his Bishop Sheen program. And uh, again, it is just something where God used this little farm boy from, uh, you know, Illinois and uh, put him on the world stage. And so, uh, again, there's so much I could, we could go hours and hours just on his life and legacy. <laughs> but um, I just look at the number of converts that he has brought to the faith, including my father, uh, who was a Seventh-day Adventist uh, and uh, studying to <laughs> go into ministry. And yet Fulton Sheen grabbed him, um, you know, through listening to him on the radio and watching him on television, and he got his attention. He got his attention. So um, I just look at his record of souls, and, and that speaks for itself. Amen. It really does. One of the books that you edited and compiled is titled Lord Teach Us to Pray, and it's a Sheen anthology you put together that's published by Sophie Institute Press. And what I'd like to know is, and I kind of already know the answer as well, but I'd like to hear you talk about it, is what kind of emphasis and how much emphasis did Sheen put on the life of prayer itself? Right. Well, I started to, you know, listen to stories from his family members. When you uh, are sitting on the board of directors for the Sheen Foundation, you meet a lot of people. You're speaking about Sheen's life, but then everybody comes up to you and tells you their own personal Sheen story of how Sheen witnessed um, uh, to them, how he took an interest in everyone. Uh, but yet they knew that he spent an hour each day with our blessed Lord um, with his holy, he would like to say his holy hour. And a lot of times when you say a holy hour, you say, what is a holy hour? But Fulton Sheen uh, has um, been preaching the need to pray for an hour each day uh, right from the very beginning of his uh, radio apostolate, he would encourage people to say, spend an hour with the scriptures. If you're Catholic, go to Mass every morning. Stay a half hour after. Uh, spend some time and meditate on the scriptures. Offer yourself up to God. And, you know, if you hear that every week, think about it. You listen to, to Fulton Sheen every week on the radio, and every week he says the same thing. Spend an hour in prayer. Catholics, Protestants, Jews, spend an hour. And you thought, there's something about this. And of course, he lived what he preached in that for 62 years, he never missed a holy hour. And um, again, that's a great testimony. So anybody that can talk the talk and walk the walk, he's got my vote. He's got my attention. But really, I think when I looked at his writings, he wrote volume after volume on prayer the Our Father, the Mass, the Holy Hour, meditations. I mean, um, wow, he, he not only was preaching on prayer, he was writing on prayer. 
and sending out booklets in the hundreds of thousands of copies, uh, which I was able to take and put into this anthology. And uh, that's, I call it a real treasury of prayer because everybody's saying, Lord, teach me to pray. You know, I think, uh, and so many people have come to you, Matthew, and said, can you help me in this prayer thing? Um, help me, teach me how to pray. And I think Fulton Sheen had heard that for so many years as a priest, you know, Archbishop Fulton Jane Sheen, could you please teach me to pray? And he said, well, if you got some time, I'll take you through my program. <laughs> and that's how he did it. Yeah, you know, yeah. I've said it probably many times on this podcast, but I say it all the time. If Catholics would really embrace what it is that, that Fulton Sheen was talking about, and we really took the time to set aside for prayer, we wouldn't be looking at a lot of the problems that we have today, not just inside the church, but outside the church as well. I mean, it, it there is a power to prayer that we just don't recognize. We view it as something we kind of tick off of our spiritual to-do list. Um, and even if we do it, right, oftentimes we can fall into that trap, but there's a real power there. And I've had on this podcast before um, Monsignor Hillary Franco, who lived with the Archbishop for several years, and he said that... Um, he said that I think it was his first morning there. He tried to get up to 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 impress uh, the archbishop with his uh, his prayer life, and he went down really early in the morning to do his own holy hour and found the archbishop already there. <laughs> and so you know this guy lived it constantly. And with regard to uh, the holy hour, one of the quotes that you have in the book, which really kind of struck me was the response to why, like, why should uh, Catholics practice a holy hour? And let me just read this real quick, because this line really struck me. Why spend an hour a day in meditation? Because we are living on the surface of our souls, knowing little either of God or of our inner self. And this is something I talk about constantly in, you know, in the science of sainthood or when I'm on the road speaking. If we don't have this life of prayer, what happens is we're too focused on ourselves. Like we become so narcissistic. And what prayer does, it takes us out of ourselves and shifts that gaze, that interior gaze we have uh, outward and upward, which is exactly what we have to do. And this, this is what it seems to me that Sheen's talking about. Mm -hmm. I, and again, I would add to that, he would always say, I don't want my life to be mine. I want it to be Christ. Hmm. And and so for someone to always say that each day, I do not want my life to be mine. I want it to be Christ. Um, you could tell he was on a mission to work with Christ, to introduce Christ, to preach Christ, and to even preach Christ crucified. And uh, that was one of the powerful uh, touchstones that I think he brought to his audience was he wasn't afraid to introduce us to the cross. And, uh, you know, his Good Friday homilies, his sermons, um, 58 consecutive years he preached on our Lord's Passion. And uh, again, he brought souls to Christ through that great love story and the greatest sermon ever told. And I he said this, that, you know, there's no better preacher in the history of man than the dying Christ. And there's no better sermon than the seven last words. And he was able to tie in themes on the seven last words each and every year through his radio addresses. And uh, two of the themes that he spoke about were the Our Father and the Mass. And uh, these are little, uh, I want to say, teachable moments that I've shared with my children of how to help them learn the Our Father and understand it with a deeper meaning when they tie in the seven last words to the Our Father or tie the seven last words into the Mass, the seven parts of the Mass. So uh, again, Sheen just trying to say, I want you to get more out of the Mass. I want you to get more out of the Our Father. I want you to increase um, your desire to pray. And, um, you know, in the book, Lord Teach Us to Pray, uh, Fulton Sheen gives 10 reasons to make a holy hour. <laughs> and so, uh, and not just that your mother said to do it, you know, it, it, there's 10 uh, good reasons to make a holy hour. So uh, I know, I know if you've got time, I'll tell you. That. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> well, to your point about when, when Sheen talks about how he wants his life to be Christ's, right? it's not his own. He didn't create himself. He knows that God did. And in this Lord Teaches to Pray, he comments on the fact that, that making a regular holy hour 
really guards us against the two extremes that you find in a lot of even the Catholic faith these days. And that would be between the, the kind of uh, activism that you see uh, prevalent in the West. And then there's quietism on the other side. So on one hand, we're doing everything and God's doing nothing. And the quietism, it's kind of us uh, sitting back and kicking our heels up and having the Lord do everything. And so the holy hour puts us in the right frame where we recognize who we are in and of ourselves, that we are children of God. And so we have to act like children. We have to uphold the family name and take our responsibilities as a child while at the same time recognizing that anything and everything we do is completely and utterly dependent upon our Father. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think what's important is that, you know, we think of a a father-son um, it's this whole idea of, I've always said to my son, listen to me, <laughs> listen to me. And with Fulton Sheen, he really wanted to stress with us to say, it is this give and take, but you have to, don't do all the talking. A lot of times we come and we pray and we just talk and talk and tell the Lord this, 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 this. Yet have we ever sat and listened to him? And he would remind us, again, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. And uh, again, it's a discipline, very hard sometimes to get to that point where you say, I'm going to just listen today and not say anything. Uh, But I think Fulton Sheen lived that. He listened to the Lord, took that time to just interiorly listen to his voice. And uh, of course, he wrote his homilies in the presence of the Blessed Sacrament. He prepared his television shows in the presence of the Blessed Sacrament. So uh, I'm sure he was listening and waiting on the Lord for that uh, timely and soundly advice each and every day. Yeah, I'm reminded of a Mark Twain quote. Uh, if, if God meant us to talk more than listen, we'd have two mouths and one ear. And right. certainly that applies to prayer. And really what you're talking about and what she was talking about is the essence of meditative prayer. And what a lot of people just don't realize is it's intended to be a quiet prayer. It's an interior conversation uh, that we have with our Lord. So the books and things upon which we meditate, that is our, that's our input into that interior conversation. And don't think that the Lord's not going to talk to you. He always will. He wants to. In fact, we need to realize that we are made to pray. We are made to be in this kind of interior conversation with our Lord. And she knew that, uh, obviously. And, and one of the things, too, that, that uh, he points out in this, uh, this book is that when you make a holy hour and you're spending time in prayer with our Lord, it's not just about you. Uh, because we are making reparation for the sin of the world. Because uh, he points out, even like with St. Mary um, or Margaret Mary, that you know, when the Sacred Heart appeared, it was a Sacred Heart, the crown of thorns was around the heart. It wasn't around his head. And so it was love that was damaged, says the Archbishop. And we, in our spending time with our Lord, are making reparation for all the damage that has been done uh, to love. And, and this points to the fact that, of, of course, as Catholics, we fully believe that we are members of the body of Christ. We are united to him through the sacraments. And so the things that happen in our lives have meaning because they're joined to him. Right. And and our Lord asks for this hour. I mean, we go back to the garden. Yeah. And of course, uh, could you not pray with me one hour? And um, are we not sometimes living the life of the apostles, sleeping, uh, you know, which is not responding. And of course, um, dealing with um, the reality that, yes, we denied the Lord. We didn't pray. He asked us to pray. We walked away. We shirked our duty. Uh, but those words from scriptures, you know, could you not spend one hour with me? Uh, go through my mind. And it's, it's just a beautiful reminder saying, yes, I need to go spend that hour with the Lord. You know, what's interesting, Al, is I, I was doing some uh, gospel meditations during Lent in the Science of Sainthood, and it, I, when I was reading through and studying for what I was going to say, you see that for every time that Peter denied our Lord, he'd already failed in his time of prayer. So he falls asleep three times in the Garden of Gethsemane when he was supposed to be praying, and then he, he denies our Lord three times. And it just speaks to the fact that if you don't have that life of prayer, 
you are going to be subject to temptation. And Sheen talks about this, of course, in, in, mm-hmm. in the book quite a bit. I mean, it, it provides a hedge around you and saves you. And he, I think he mentions the, the example of Job and says, the only way things happen to Job is because the Lord allowed those things to happen. And the Lord will give us the same protection. If he allows suffering to happen to us, that's one thing. And he does that because he knows that that's best for our eternal salvation. Uh, because he knows everything, right? He knows what's best for us. And like any good parent, he's mostly concerned with our e- our eternal well-being for our future. Even though he wants us to be happy in the here and now, he knows what we need in order to, to achieve that divine life with him. But if we don't have that life of prayer, we're wide open. I mean, anything and everything can happen to us. Right. And I think what was so reassuring about Fulton Sheen uh, in how he conducted himself is that you really felt he was a friend of Jesus, that he uh, was truly an ambassador for Christ, and that he knew him so very well. And he would write, he'd say, well, you know, how do you get to know a friend by only seeing him once a month, once a week? Um, Our friendships, um, you know, born out of just, uh, you know, casual encounters? No, it's through spending time with the friend. And uh, that was so true. He was saying, can you, you know, take medicine only once a week, uh, or do you need to take it more often? Uh, it's this idea of just saying to us, um, you get what you put into it, but if you want to have a deep friendship with Christ, you need to spend time with him each and every day. And uh, again, seeing it in how he just, um, every time he went on television, he would always uh, talk about a current affair, talk about an issue that was uh, important to the audience, uh, but he would take a moment, uh, usually at the end of the broadcast, to bring in a gospel story, uh, to uh, help people to relate that Christ was like us in all things but sin, and he suffered just as we suffer. Uh, again, a good friend going to bat for another friend, and again, it's this idea of friendships are fostered by time. You know, how do you spell love? My kids would always say, uh, love is not spelled L-O-V-E, it's spelled T-I-M-E, because uh, they want to spend time with us. So uh, again, that is a lesson that I think I try to teach my children, is you want good friends, you're going to have to spend some time with them. And this is what Fulton Sheen did so well, spent time with the Lord and became his best friend. I would have to imagine there are some people who are listening to this and thinking, oh my goodness, an hour a day, and you're talking about going to daily Mass, Al, and and Archbishop Sheen says we should spend 30 minutes afterwards, and your life is busy, and all the rest of it. My advice would be, and I want to know if you have any practical pieces of advices that you've learned from Sheen with regard to the Holy Hour as well, but... I always say that if you're brand new to it, you kind of eat the elephant one bite at a time, and you might not be able to do a whole hour right off the bat, uh, just because it's kind of a muscle that you develop over time. And so, you know, start with your 10 or 15 minutes and engage in prayer. And I would say this too, there's a, if you don't even know how to enter into meditative prayer, you go over to my website at matthewsleonard.com. There's a free cheat sheet there called eight ways to jumpstart your prayer life it just goes bang 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 exactly how you do meditative prayer it's not rocket science and we need to do this like right now (laughs) like this is so important uh but you you start off with your 10 or 15 minutes and as time goes by what you're going to discover is it goes faster and faster and faster and the reason why is because this is what you're made for because you are created for relationship with almighty god now, it, do you have any pieces off the top of your head of advice right. that, that Sheen gave? Yeah. Well, you know, I, I give personal advice in that, first of all, I start off by imitating the apostles and that I sleep. Uh, <laughs> you know, you know, in, in, in that I, somebody told Coffee me it's like a doctor. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a doctor's office. Just pretend that you're in the waiting room. The divine physician is in front of you. Um, he's hidden, uh, but he's there. And so you're in the waiting room. So just relax and be uh, in the presence of the doctor, the divine physician. So um, it was to to idea to say, if Jesus appeared today, what would you say to him? Probably would just be not so much gobsmacked, but, you know, we probably not even have the words to say. We would just be so happy to be in his presence. Um, So just enjoy the moment. Enjoy your time there. And Fulton Sheen would say uh, to non-Catholics especially, just 
go into a Catholic church and just sit there. Just sit there for 15, 20 minutes, uh, if an hour if you can. And I can guarantee you that after that hour is over, you will have a sense of peace and consolation like no other. And uh, so uh, there's something about just being present, just being. And I start with that. You may not have anything to say to God, or you may not uh, really want to take prayer with you or uh, books or anything like that. But just show up first. Show up first and try that. And uh, then you start to feel more comfortable. And then if you want, of course, Sheen would recommend that you brought the scriptures with you. Um, bring some holy books. Um, because you have to come and uh, be fed. Um, and of course, again, these holy books mean a lot. And Fulton Sheen knew that. And he developed this little pamphlet called The Holy Hour. Could you not spend one hour with me? And he distributed hundreds of thousands of these little pamphlets in the 40s. And I was able to get one, and I put it into uh, the anthology, Lord Teach Us to Pray, because it's a great little uh, seven-step program where he's saying, if you want to make a holy hour, I'll give you something to meditate on each day that's going to draw you closer uh, to our Lord and Savior. And um, again, they were just simple seven topics where he's just saying, spend a little time meditating on this topic and then this topic. And they're simply, you know, he would say, meditate on the incarnation. Um, you know, when you go and visit the holy hour, just that God so loved the world that he became man. So just spend some time thinking about that. And uh, it's amazing how you can take that thought with you for weeks and weeks sometimes, just enjoying that. And um, again, a meditation about how Christ lives in you. Just think about that. You are this vessel that carries around our Lord, um, especially if you receive the Eucharist. Um, you're this witness. So uh, these little, you know, so I might say pithy sayings, but uh, little themes that you can just carry with you and, of course, enjoy your holy hour. And uh, again, this how does the, you know, the divine line, the divine life lives within me, but I can also lose it. Uh, and this is one thing I warn uh, people are just remember you can lose your soul. I mean, a lot of times we think, uh, oh no, God's got a mercy. He's got me covered. I got my get out of jail card. Um, you know, I'm wearing a brown scapular. I'm going to be okay. <laughs> no, you're not going to like, you can yeah. lose your soul. Remember that. Remember that. And, uh, again, we think of those who, um, have followed the apparitions of our lady over the years. I mean, our lady of Fatima said to the children, uh, souls go to hell because people don't pray for them. So uh, we need to pray and pray. And uh, Matthew, you made a note about reparation or a comment about reparation, um, you know, a, few, a little while ago. And I'll never forget going to uh, Sheen's library in Rochester. And I got to go through his handwritten notes. And I was going through one of his talks and he actually circled the word reparation seven times in his notes because he really wanted to us to spend some time making reparation. And I think that's what we need to do. Uh, we have to admit we are sinners. We've offended the Lord and we need to make reparation not only for our sins, but for the sins of others. Yeah. And to that point, there can be no love without sacrifice. Like if we right. say we love and we are not willing to sacrifice, then our love is essentially a lie. And one of those little pithy lines that he has in the book that, that again, kind of jumped out at me was love begins when duty ends. And so we can go through the motions and, you know, we can go to mass and we can say the public prayers of the mass. We can, uh, you know, if we're, if our family does a rosary, okay, we, we pray along with the rosary or whatever, but it's not about requirements. It's not about duties. It's not about obligations. It is about a love relationship with our Lord. And so we have to enter into this real kind of personal conversation with him. And as you were saying earlier, how can you really even know someone if you don't enter into conversation with them? If I never spoke to my wife, you know, we wouldn't have much of a relationship. It's the same thing with our Lord. And that doesn't mean just asking him for this and that and the other. It means engaging him in real interior dialogue to the to the end of conforming ourselves to him. That's what prayer is always directed toward. It's not just 
relationship, right? What does relationship for us with Christ mean? It means us becoming like him again. So that is always the end and the goal of prayer. And the fact that Sheen focused so much upon the cross and Christ crucified just speaks to the fact that how prayer and the cross dovetail together. Right. And, you know, I think what Fulton Sheen said, um, and I use this line all the time, he said, um, you know, everybody wants a cross, but not a crucifix. Mm. But if you're willing to put a crucifix on your desk for three days and look at it, it will change you. It will change you. And this is one of the holy habits that Sheen taught me and has taught so many people is to have a crucifix on your desk and spend a little bit of time each day with the crucifix, meditating on the seven last words that our Lord spoke from the cross. And I mean, I have one right here. This is my desk here. So this is my little crucifix that I have on my desk. And um, it's called uh, Jesus the Listener. It's a, a version of our Lord on the cross where he's listening. He's uh, leaning forward and listening to us uh, because he is listening to us and uh, pleading with us too. And so, uh, again, this holy habit of just understanding this great love story. He loved us so much that he laid down his life for his friends. And uh, again, to spend time thinking about those words, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. This day you'll be with me in paradise. Woman, behold your son. Behold your mother. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I thirst. It is finished. And Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Uh, these seven last words are, uh, I like to say, uh, the words of a dying man who is just so in love with us that he wants to give us, uh, again, this wisdom to take with us all the rest of the days, take with us all the days of our lives. So, uh, again, get in touch with the crucifix. And I, when I give parish missions, uh, the first talk I give is, where's the crucifix in your life? Um, you need to reintroduce yourself to this devotion of meditating on the cross. And uh, Matthew, you know, just studying the saints, how many pictures we see of the saints. Uh, I like to say they're photo op. They're looking upon the crucifix. Yes, and, uh, you know, yeah. yeah. So let's pose for our photos, right? Our saints <laughs> photos are, are practicing here. Um, but again, the power of the cross. The power and you know, to, again, to that point, I, I think if more of us would actually meditate upon Christ crucified, and we all celebrate Easter, obviously, but you can't have a resurrection without the crucifixion. And I, I think a lot of times we make the mistake of, of forgetting about the crucifixion as soon as Lent is over. It's like, no, I mean, this is something we have to return to constantly because that's, that's the source of everything. But I think if we would meditate more upon the crucifixion and Christ on the cross, then perhaps a, a fair number more Catholics would actually believe in the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist. We would have a deeper understanding I'm not sure that Archbishop Sheen would be shocked uh, at the lack of belief in, in real presence because I think he understand human nature. He understood human nature pretty well. But what do you think he would say uh, with regard to the state of the, you know, the polls and things that we see with regard to the lack of belief of the real presence? Well, I mean, one line that comes to me, and again, I share this all the time, is that Fulton Sheen would say to us, a world that is capable of of nailing God on a cross is capable of doing anything, mm. you know? And so um, including mass apostasy, including an abandonment of the faith uh, because they turned on him 2000 years ago. But I think it's this whole idea of Fulton Sheen would always say, what are your higher loves? What are your higher loves? We've made this exchange for all these lower loves. So the love of the blessed Virgin Mary, the saints, the Eucharist, we sadly have made exchanges to say, well, no, my sports are more important. My uh, social engagements are more important. Um, again, the activities that I've just busied myself with uh, that are just a distraction from taking me away from the church and from prayer. Uh, I'm sorry, it's this exchange of loves. And Fulton Sheen encourages us to always choose the higher loves. And uh, sadly, many of us have made a poor exchange. A poor exchange and so our desire to even believe that it's truly Jesus body blood soul and divinity uh, sometimes has sadly gone by the wayside and um, we see the numbers and it's very discouraging to think how the church can change so quickly 
uh, it's, I think it's just in 50 years we've seen this, um, you just this mass uh, movement to say, I don't believe anymore. I just think it's a symbol. It's not really Jesus truly present. And yet Fulton Sheen, by encouraging the holy hour, is saying, but if you would just give him a chance and be in his presence, he will have an effect on you. And we've seen so many people give Jesus a try in the Blessed Sacrament and listen to him, and they're converted. They're converted. And all the converts that have come to the faith, usually it's the Eucharist that draws them uh, to the Catholic Church. So um, I guess there's proof in those numbers, too. Yeah. Yeah, and you mentioned Our Lady, and I know that Archbishop Sheen wrote a fair bit about Our Lady. Did he? I mean, here we are in the year of Saint Joseph. Did he write or say anything about Saint Joseph? Because I noticed that he dedicated "Lord Teach Us to Pray" to Our Lord's earthly father. Um, right. So, yeah. Did he say anything yeah. directly about him? Yeah, he wrote a great deal about Saint Joseph in the sense of he uh, talked about how he would have been a strong and vibrant. St. Joseph, um, you know, sometimes the, the, art, the artisans depict him as an old man, uh, but uh, old men don't cross the desert uh, to go to Egypt. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I you think know, I've heard him say that, yeah. Uh, things like that. And, you know, I will say, I, I dedicated the book to St. Joseph in the sense that when I compiled this book, because it's a collection. Oh, you're the, of, you're, so you're the one who did the dedication yeah, to St. Joseph? I, okay, I gotcha. I'm, All right. Yeah, right. I misunderstood yeah. that. And, and so what I do is I see... I've been, I've got, I've read most of Sheen's writings, and so I put these anthologies together. Where, um, you know, I saw that he wrote nine books on the seven last words. So, I put seven of them, seven of them together in an anthology, and edit them, and then compile them, and, and then we produce the book. The same was true for Lord Teach Us to Pray. I took his Holy Hour prayer book, his uh, little um, wartime prayer book his uh, Calvary and the Mass, his writings on the Our Father, and I put them all together. And I, when I did it, I thought, wow, I want to dedicate this to St. Joseph because he truly was the first adorer in that he not only adored the Lord, but he taught our Lord how to pray, to think that our Lord went to St. Joseph to learn from him how to pray. And, of course, he taught him the scriptures. So, um, And, again, I made that dedication to that book many years uh, even before the year of St. Joseph was declared, I just had this, uh, you know, inspiration to say, I, this one needs to be to St. Joseph, because he taught our Lord to pray, and, of course, he adored our Lord, and we need to learn how to adore him like St. Joseph adored him, and desire to be with him as St. Joseph did. And so when, of course, we live with Our Lady, we need to have Our Lady live with us and guide us too. So um, it was just the prompting of the Holy Spirit, I like to say, and then all of a sudden the Holy Father declares a year of St. Joseph. So I thought, God's perfect timing. So yeah, As always, uh, well, right? Yeah, it's true. Would you say that, I mean, we've talked a lot about the, the prayer and, and the crucifixion. Would you say that those kind of two things are really emblematic of his spirituality. I mean, you know, you talk about the little flower, like St. Teresa of you, and she has, you know, her little way. Uh, is it the cross that's at the heart of, of Sheen's spirituality mm -hmm. and what he'd be known for? Yeah, I, I would, I would say that because some, some people, when you Google some videos about Fulton Sheen, there is this one video called the art of preaching. And it was put on by the Dominican fathers. He gave a uh, a retreat to the Dominican fathers about the art of preaching. And the whole art of preaching is to preach Christ and him crucified. And so to think about the 58 consecutive years of preaching, um, the Good Friday addresses, uh, putting together all these books on the seven last words, um, and even watching how he holds his hands and sometimes even grabs his crucifix, his pectoral cross, you knew there was an intimate relationship that he was having with our Lord and his suffering, his passion, and he wanted to, of course, gift it to the world, uh, to not keep it as a secret. And in fact, in his personal apartment, uh, Fulton Sheen had a five-foot-tall crucifix at the foot of his bed. And so every morning he woke up, the first thing he saw was Christ crucified. And when he closed his eyes to go to bed, of course, this big crucifix at the foot of his bed looking upon him. And so uh, he kept Christ before him. And um, again, I think this message of 
uh, the power of the cross he wanted to share with the world. And it speaks to all faiths, I think, uh, especially, uh, again, this great love story, because it makes people contemplate, maybe he is the Son of God. Maybe he did come to this world to save us. And um, again, the testimonies uh, over the years, uh, but I would say that his ministry was very much about the passion, the power of the cross, and very Eucharistic and Marian. So um, again, to peg Fulton Sheen as just one uh, type of priest would be difficult. I think he was a man for all people. And, of course, his appeal was worldwide. And this is what uh, gets me sometimes as we forget of his reach to Australia, uh, Oceania, you know, of course, even uh, Asia and uh, India and, of course, Europe. Um, they're still talking about Fulton Sheen even today. So uh, he's a blessed man. And that's why the church is going to declare him blessed one day, God willing. Very soon, Lord willing. Um you know, if someone's listening to this and thinking, I'm not really all that familiar uh, with him, I hear you guys talking about him, where would you point them first? Right. Um, again, there are so many books available. Of the 66 books that Fulton Sheen wrote, uh, there's about 45 of them still uh, in uh, distribution. They're still being reprinted. Um, again, I try to point people to uh, his writings on the cross. Uh, you know, Victory Over Vice is an excellent book. His book, Life of Christ, is uh, somewhat uh, what I call such a classic that uh, it is almost a must-read. If you want to know who Christ is, read Fulton Sheen's Life of Christ. It's a beautiful Lectio Divina. And, of course, his book, The World's First Love, which is Sheen's writings on the Blessed Virgin Mary. Uh, but I always say watch some of his videos. Listen to some of his audio recordings. Uh, there's so much free content out there. I mean, I set up a, a little website. It's simply called Bishop Sheen Today. And because uh, I thought we need Bishop Sheen today. So people Google Bishop Sheen Today. And on the little website I set up, there's 100 YouTube videos, uh, 400 of his audio recordings, a few downloadable books. And I just, I just want everybody to read Sheen, listen to Sheen, you know, just consume Sheen, I think, somehow, and take him in as your new life coach. And uh, we hear that term, life coach, a lot of times. And uh, I like to say he's a bit of my life coach. He's really helped me to make sense of this world and to truly tell me that my life is worth living. God has a plan for me, and for you, and for everyone, uh, if we just give God a chance. So um, again, bishopsheentoday.com is a great website that has everything there. And uh, again, I always say pray about it. But the anthology that you're mentioning, Lord Teach Us to Pray, is a great collection. Uh, it's helped so many people uh, improve their prayer life, especially in regards to the Mass, to the Our Father, uh, you know, the Holy Hour. We've been talking about some of the 10 reasons to make a Holy Hour, but he gives all 10. And, of course, Stations of the Cross is a beautiful devotion that Sheen encouraged us to pray each day. So uh, that anthology, Lord Teaches to Pray, is a great little starter book. It's not it's about 250 pages, so it's not overwhelming. And you can just enjoy it in bite-sized pieces. And, of course, uh, uh, The Cries of Jesus from the Cross is seven of Sheen's book in one. So I'm thrifty. <laughs> I'm thrifty. I always say, why buy seven $10 books? when you can buy one book for under $20 uh, and enjoy all seven of Sheen's classics on <laughs> the seven last words. So uh, anyway, uh, but uh, again, Google Sheen, but uh, pray and just say, come Holy Spirit. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure he'll plug you into uh, the right uh, talk. I mean, and I, I say to people, saints pick us. I really feel that Fulton Sheen picked me and said, I'm going to work with this guy <laughs> from Canada. And, uh, you know, use him to help uh, uh, share this uh, these great stories, and uh, and that's what Fulton Sheen was. He was a storyteller, uh, but again, he used his craft to bring us to Christ, and I'm grateful for that. I would say too that uh, saints pick us, but we can always tap them on the shoulder as well. And so, if you're looking for uh, some direction as to what to read, I would say ask for the intercession of the archbishop you know i mean he let him let him uh let him lead you through the power of the holy spirit to what it is that he wants you to know al are there any uh 
personal websites. So bishopsheentoday.com. Are there any other sites? Uh, is there a particular place where people can go find out more of what you're doing personally, or is that where you'd send them? That's where I'd send them. And, um, you know, I'm on YouTube and um, always making presentations and uh, different uh, online retreats. It seems like that's been all we've been doing for the last a year Truly. and a bit. And uh, <laughs> But it, it's this nice sense of... Um, Again, Bishop Sheen today will is a great place to start, and um, and I always say to people, you know, buy at least one book, um, and and give Fulton Sheen a try, and the next thing you know, um, you'll be buying four and five and six. But uh, he he is a trusted guide, and you think about him, he's a retreat master. He's, of course, uh, he spent ten the last ten years of his life just giving retreats, especially to priests and seminarians. Because he knew the key to the renovation of the church and salvation of souls was to renew the priesthood. He spent a lot of time just really trying to make sure that the priests were being well-formed for them, of course, to minister uh, to those that would come to them and, of course, to preach Christ and him crucified. So uh, and every retreat he gave, he pleaded with the priests and seminarians to make a holy hour. And I'll plead with your audience today, too, to... Make that holy hour, and it just may be in the privacy of your own home, but to try to carve out 15 minutes here, 15 minutes there, uh, to spend that hour with the Lord. And um, my parents taught me about tithing, and, you know, we always think of tithing our financial uh, gifts, but we're here to tithe our time also. And uh, so my mom would say, you have to give the Lord two hours a day. If you got 24 hours in a day and, you know, you're... Uh, going to go out and about, try to give the Lord 10% of your time, minimum, minimum. And so the holy hour blends in so beautifully to that tithing of our time. And uh, for some people who are big on tithing, it makes sense. It makes sense. But um, again, God is the gift of time. He's given it to us, so let's not waste it. Yeah, I'd also and, say that this is where the whole sacrificial thing comes in again, right? Because, mm-hmm. uh, for example, and me personally, did I, did I hear you say you had six children? Is that right? I'm one of 12 children. I grew up in a large Catholic family, and I have three children and you five grandchildren. Children. Yeah. Okay, so you have kids. I do too. And, and it's not even a matter if you have children or not. We all have responsibilities. For me to be able to get up and to spend the time in prayer, I have to get up before they do. And so it is dark. And is it hard? Yeah, it gets hard. There's no doubt. But I always try to think about if I'm struggling on a particular day, I will think, look, if if our Lord was beaten and bloodied on a crucifix for me, am I not willing to get out of this bed and go spend time with him? So we don't want to keep the, the crucifix in mind because it's the ultimate uh, expression of what it is that our Lord was willing to do for us. And so we constantly have to ask ourselves, what am I willing to do for this God man who so beautifully expressed his love for me? Uh, so keep that in mind as you're struggling to find the time or you're little like, well, I don't know how I'm going to find that much time to give to our Lord. It's there. We waste our time with all kinds of things that really have zero impact or perhaps even a negative impact upon our spiritual destiny. And so I would say we need to step back and take a look and see what is it in our lives that uh, we can give up in order to spend more time with our Lord. And I think that Archbishop Sheen is such a beautiful example of this. And Al, I want to thank you very much for coming on The Art of Catholic and discussing him. And I would love to have you back sometime because there's a lot more we could talk about with regard to the Archbishop. Right. And uh, again, 66 books, 20 years of radio, (laughs) years on television. We've just scratched the surface on just a few of his books. So uh, there's lots more to talk about. Well, thank you again for coming on. You're welcome. And of course, I just will remind everybody once again, Fulton Sheen's battle cry, unless souls are saved, nothing is saved. Mm -hmm. Uh, We need to take that seriously. Again, the business of saving our own souls and the souls of others. So uh, thank you, Archbishop Sheen, for those words of wisdom many, many years ago. Lovely. And God bless all of you and uh, make your holy hours.